Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and I'm on WW Personal Point. Happy Friday, it is Friday, so it is weigh-in day. It is WW Workshop Topic Day. I'm going to share with you all about my not so fun week. It was not a good week not a good week, as well as my goals moving into the next week. So if you're excited, give this video a big, huge thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on because I do a Friday weigh-in every single week. Check out that description box down below for nutrition coaching, where I offer personalized to you macros and calories. I highly recommend this. This is how you're going to reach your weight loss goals. It is so, so important, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to chat with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things. And don't forget, come on over, join our Facebook group. It's free and we'd love to have you. So let's jump into my week weigh in WW workshop topic and let's set some goals moving in to November. Friday, friends. I hope you had an amazing, amazing week. I did not have an amazing week. I don't want to say that. I don't want to be Debbie Downer because my week overall wasn't terrible, but I had not one, not two, but three not so great things happen this week. So let's just jump into that before we jump into the WW workshop topic, setting some goals my way in. Let's talk about the three things that happened this week. So if you follow me in my Facebook group, or if you follow me over on Instagram, if you don't, I'd love to have you follow me on Instagram and in my Facebook group. That's really just how you can keep up with me a little bit more day to day. And I share more about my day-to-day -day life on those platforms as well. I share that I have a cold. I've had a cold for about a week. I thought at first it was allergies and then it quickly spiraled into a full-blown cold. And I've had that now for an entire week. What that has meant for me is blowing my nose excessively, being absolutely exhausted and fatigued and just really not feeling good overall. Having that kind of head congestion and that snuffy, stuffy nose, my nose was so raw this week from blowing it so much. It was just not a pretty side. It was, was not a good thing to have happen for the entire week. And then on top of that, number two, I started my cycle, which we know leads to exhaustion and fatigue. So pair that with my cold. And it was just a recipe for wanting to lay in bed all day, having, you know, the traditional symptoms of being on your cycle, bloated, the being tired, the cramps, all the fun stuff that comes along with that. And then number three, and really what just topped off the trifecta of issues this last Friday. So one week ago at boot camp, I injured myself. Now I don't even know 100% what injury I suffer from or how exactly it happened, but we have circuits on Friday at boot camp, and so we partner up for everything. So we were instructed to have one person do a plank, and the second person goes behind the person doing a plank, picks up their feet, and does squats. So the person on the ground is holding the plank, and the partner is holding their feet up in the air and doing squats. So getting in a lower body workout while the person on the ground is getting in a core workout. Well, we decided that I would be doing the plank, and my partner would grab my feet and do the squats. Well, as soon as she picked up my feet, I felt this immense pain in my abdomen. It felt like my abdomen just stretched beyond its capacity. I didn't have any pop or tear feeling. It just felt really stretched and really painful. I mean, so painful that I immediately dropped my feet and I said, I I'm not going to do this. And she was like, sorry, sorry, sorry. And I said, it's not you. I don't know. It's just, my body is just not, is not going to be able to do this exercise. So I just hopped up, grabbed her feet and we continued through the rest of our workout. Now the pain was immediate. And like I said, it felt like this really tight stretch. And then the pain kind of dissipated once she let go of my feet and I got up and was able to kind of shake it off a little bit. So I was able to finish the boot camp workout. But by the time I finished my workout on Friday, got in my car to head home, the pain had returned a little bit to my abdomen and my lower abdomen right above my groin was pretty swollen. And it was kind of a swell, like a tube type of swelling. So if you rubbed your hand across my lower abdomen, which is generally fairly flat. It felt like a tube of swelling. I came home, took some Tylenol that kind of alleviated a little bit of the pain. But by the time I went to bed on Friday, I was miserable. Like I hardly slept at all Friday night. I was in my bed. I was on my recliner. I was on my couch. I was trying to come up with the most comfortable way to sleep that night. 
it was absolutely miserable. And then I started doctor Googling it, which we know is never a good decision, never a good decision. And I was finding all sorts of information as we do when we utilize Dr. Google. Everything from just stretching out a muscle, potentially a muscle strain, sprain, or tear. And then what kind of scared me a little bit is the possibility of having a hernia, which in my reading on Dr. Google, I believe you have to have surgery to repair that. Most of the time, the hernia doesn't resolve itself. And even worse than that, they were saying that your small intestine can separate and you'll have a hard time going number two. And if you can't go number two or pass gas, you need to go to the emergency room. So of course I start to panic and I'm doing this at like two o'clock in the morning. I'm Googling, I'm doctor Googling at two o'clock in the morning. Never a smart decision. So I finally put my phone down, fall back asleep, wake up in the morning, and luckily, thank goodness, I was able to have number two happen pretty regularly in the morning, so I was relieved that it wasn't a small intestine issue. I still didn't know if I had a hernia, a sprain, a tear, a I didn't know what was going on with my abdomen. So on Saturday, I literally rested all day. I took two naps, I think. I laid in bed, I let my abdomen rest. I couldn't sit up without using my arms because it just hurt. And then Saturday night, I did decide to go to a little girl's night for just a couple hours with my boot cramp group. One of the women there actually is a yoga instructor and her husband is a physician. So she actually called her husband at the meetup, at the girls' night and asked him about my situation. He said it sounds like I may have just strained or sprained an abdominal muscle. He didn't think that I had a hernia because nothing was poking out. It was just swollen and he just recommended lots and lots of, lots of rest and relaxation and making sure that I'm not adding any additional strain to my abdomen. So that was honestly a huge sigh of relief and that's exactly what I did the majority of the weekend. By Sunday night, I was feeling substantially better, substantially better. I was able to take a walk Monday and Tuesday and then I actually returned to boot camp on Wednesday and I just took it really easy. I am not doing any core or abdomen workouts right now until it is completely healed. I have no swelling, no pain, which most of that by now has dissipated. There's a tiny bit of swelling. And if I turn just the wrong way, it can have a little bit of abdominal pain, but I've been able to work out. I've been able to walk. I'm doing a much less intense workout at boot camp, So I am so relieved, so relieved that it wasn't worse than it was. My cold has gotten better. My cycle is gone and life has become good. But this week, let me tell you, was rough. It was rough. Being a past binge eater, emotional eater, this was a rough week for me. It really could have become quite a spiral in the wrong direction, but I made sure that I focused on food this week because I couldn't exercise like normal. I wanted to make sure that food and drinking my water was 100% my focus. And really, truly, I think that saved me this week from spiraling back into some of my old eating habits and it may have saved me in my way in as well. But before we jump into my weigh-in, I wanna talk with you guys a little bit about this week's WW workshop topic. And that is how to use simple swaps to save points. Now, for those of us that track calories and macros as well, or independently track calories and macros, these tips are great for us on how to save some calories as well. Think about some of your favorite recipes or what's on your menu to whip up this week. What if you can make some of those points just kind of poof and disappear and make those recipes just a little bit less point dense or calorie and macro dense. Try this WW guide for healthier ingredient swaps. If a recipe calls for fattier types of meat or poultry like skirt steak, ground beef, or chicken thighs, try leaner cuts like tri-tip sirloin, 95% lean ground beef, or skinless chicken breast. You can save up to five points per serving. P.S. If you enjoy seafood, shrimp and tuna steaks make great swaps too. If your recipe calls for coconut oil or butter, try all olive oil or canola oil, and you can save up to four points per tablespoon. What about full fat milk and cheese? Try fat free or reduced fat cheese, and again, save up to four points per serving. If your recipe calls for traditional sugar, try granulated stevia, grated apples, or mashed bananas. And again, you can you save up to four points per tablespoon. Oil in baked goods, my favorite swap is unsweetened applesauce, and you can save all the points, up to five per tablespoon. If the recipe calls for heavy cream or sour cream, you can try canned pumpkin or fat-free Greek yogurt. I'll even sometimes substitute whole milk, and this can save you up to 11 points 
per quarter cup. And if a recipe calls for peanut butter, swap that out for powdered peanut butter and save five points per two tablespoons. Those are some excellent ideas for swapping out some of those higher point, higher calorie ingredients. Now let's talk about how to save even more points and calories. Cut down on oil or other fats. Try grilling, broiling, or steaming your food instead of frying or sauteing it. Brush oil directly onto food or try using a cooking spray or oil spritzer. Use reduced st salt stock to prevent stir fry vegetables from sticking. Stretch a serving or amount. Chop nuts and chocolate into smaller pieces. A little bit goes a long way. Opt for grated cheese instead of sliced or cubed and look for brands with less fat or no added sugar and use the WW app or your calorie tracking app to compare. Let's make one thing clear. You should be absolutely 1 million percent okay making a recipe as is. Full fat ingredients, full sugar ingredients, you make the recipe as is, that is absolutely fine. But if you're looking to save some points or save some calories, these healthy swaps can be just what you need. Losing weight isn't about turning all of your favorite recipes into less favorite recipes. It's about finding healthier swaps for some of the ingredients and in some of the recipes. You can still enjoy some of your favorite foods on your weight loss journey by making these simple swaps. But also make sure you're planning ahead to fit foods that you love, full fat, full sugar, yummy baked goods, yummy recipes that are tried and true in your family into your weight loss journey. Whatever you do to lose weight, you have to do that to maintain your weight and your weight loss journey should not only be enjoyable, but sustainable long term. And if we're cutting out all of our favorite foods or all of our favorite recipes or modifying everything to be low fat, low calorie, that's not fun. That's not sustainable and we're not going to stick with it long term and that's when the weight starts to return. So make your journey livable and sustainable long term. That's really the key to success. I enjoyed this topic. I think these simple swaps are absolutely effective and beneficial. The only one I don't love is fat-free cheese because you know I don't eat fat-free cheese or I like to call it plastic cheese but all of the other recommendations are excellent. So screenshot this from the video, copy and paste it, have this on hand to make those healthy swaps. So now let's go ahead and jump into my weigh-in. Like I said, this has been a week, probably the least fun week that I've had in a while, but because I focused on healthy habits and really focused on my healed relationship with food and didn't let myself spiral into old habits, drink my water, chose good foods, I ended out the week with a loss, you guys. Injury, cycle, and cold, I ended out the week with a one point to loss. That is pretty amazing. I ended out October strong with a 1.2 loss. I will go ahead and put here on the screen my total loss for the month of October, as well as how much weight I have lost total. And I am happy, very happy to report that I have exceeded 130 pounds lost. That's a human. That's a small human. That's my friend Kate at boot camp. Okay, she weighs 130 pounds. That is my friend Kate. I have lost carrying Kate on my back, and that blows my mind. It still blows my mind to this day. All of the changes in my body, all of my changes with my relationship with food, I'm so proud of myself that I didn't spiral back into old habits. I'm proud of myself for sticking with what I know is good for my body and good for my weight loss. And I've lost 130 pounds, 130 pounds, still absolutely blows my mind. I mean, actually makes me a little emotional. That's a lot of weight and it's been really hard. It's been really hard, but it's been really good and I'm really, really proud of myself and I'm excited to see what the future brings for the rest of my weight loss and then on my weight maintenance and fitness journey. Okay. Pulling myself together. Now I want to hear from you guys. How was your week? Did you gain? Did you lose? Please tell me you had a better week than I did. Let me know everything down in the comments. And what do you think about these simple swaps for higher point, higher calorie foods? And if you have some other swaps to share, definitely leave them down in the comments. I know we could use all the tips and tricks that we can get. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Again, I upload videos five days a week and Friday is always weigh in day and check out that description box for nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things. And don't forget, come join our Facebook group. We'd love to have you. Happy Friday, friends. I love you guys so much. Thank you for your support and I'll see you in tomorrow's grocery haul. Bye.